Shields up paladins and welcome to a For Honor Hero Guide. As you can tell by the title of this video I'll be talking to you all about the Highlander and how I like to use this particular character. The Highlander is one of the hybrid characters within the Viking faction. He has a hard difficulty rating as well as he is a technical fighter and has two combat forms. His base stats are his health is set to 125, his stamina is set to 120, and his sprint speed is set to 1.78 milliseconds. Now with all this being said and done, let's go ahead and jump on right on over to his feats. So his tier 1 feats are Rush, which is triggered to gain a movement speed for a short duration. Body Count, which is a passive ability. Killing Soldiers grants you health and stamina. And Fast Recovery, which is a passive ability. Stamina regenerates faster. His tier 2 feats are Bear Trap, set a trap that damages and stops victims in their tracks. Inspire. Allies and yourself deal more damage, soldiers fight faster. And Winner's Advantage, which is a passive ability, gain a temporary attack buff after a successful attack. His tier 3 feats are Second Wind, recover some of your health. Longbow, fire a longbow for moderate damage. And Fury, raise sprint speed slightly, attack and defense greatly. And finally for his tier 4 he has Spear Storm. Aerial attack that deals medium damage in multiple areas. Fire flask, throw a projectile creating a fire effect over an area. And champion's aura, which is gain an aura which heals you and nearby allies. So for his tier one, what I what I personally like to use is fast recovery. Now I have seen other Highlanders uh, run around with body count and kind of stay down on the ram during breach. Uh, either if you're attacking or defending, I see some Highlanders go down there specifically with body count um, to do that. Now, me personally, I don't like going down onto the ram for a couple reasons. One, the Highlander uses a lot of stamina when he swings. Of course, it's a big weapon. Nah, you know. Um, Another another couple things is, is that a lot of people, right at the beginning anyways, are not really focused on that ram. Usually there might be one person down there, maybe two, uh, but usually their their whole team is running the ramparts, usually at that point in time. So really, at that point, you know, you're pretty much down there just killing minions just to be killing minions and not really helping your team, which is now getting uh, 4v3. And so, in my personal opinion... I like to use fast recovery just because anything that can help me gain stamina back quicker while I'm sitting there fighting is always going to be a plus for me. Um, his tier 2, for me, I'm always using Winner's Advantage, which is you gain, attack, uh, gain a temporary attack buff after a successful attack. So. If you're going into your Celtic, uh, Celtic Curse Cancel, or if you're going into just going in, uh, you did a heavy going right into Dumb and Glass, you know, then you're going to go into another heavy with that, um, or anything like that. You'll always know whenever you have Winner's Advantage active, is because you'll, your arms will start glowing as in if you picked up the, the attack buff. Uh, so you'll know when you always have it active and also whoever you're fighting can see that as well is that if they do take the hit they're going to take an extra damage uh, extra damage on top of that now so again I have some I have seen some people run body count and inspire uh, again that if they're down on the ram mostly but again as I said a Highlander in my personal opinion even though that he's a hybrid character He's not necessarily very good dead on the ram, just because, in my personal opinion, is that he's using a lot of stamina just to kill two people. <laughs> it's 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 weird for him. He's like he's got this huge sword, but he's only hitting one person, even though that he's surrounded. Um, even with zone attacks, you know, it, it just seems like he's still hitting that one person. And that's what's kind of weird about it, even though, uh, in my personal opinion, I would say the Raider, if I had to pick a Viking, I would always go Raider for, to be the one to uh, stay down on the ram. He's quicker, it can take out them a lot quicker, <laughs> and uh, he, he still deals good damage. So, that's kind of the reason why I use the Highlander more as a, 
specifically in Breach more as a floater character, and I'll get more into that later on as, as we talk here. So for his tier 3, uh, tier 3 has kind of got a couple good ones. Uh, I use Fury, which is again, raises the sprint speed and attack and defense greatly. Um, he already hits like a truck already. So anything that I can put on him as a winner's advantage and then now Fury on top of that to make him hurt even more than even on top of that, maybe an attack buff, you know, that's just, that's just extra damage that you're just throwing out there. So if you hit somebody, most likely you can, with all that added on to you, you can almost two shot, almost most mostly anybody, if not do a good chunk of damage. Um, I know at least with the commander at the end, uh, a lot of people will definitely focus you down because you're one target not to be messed with, uh, specifically while you're there. Now, the other one is that I have seen some Highlander, Highlanders run it, which is Second Wind, which is always great, uh, since just because people will always sit there and camp the healing zone. So, go ahead and have Second Wind on you. Go ahead, pop it, whatever you need it. I understand that. Um, Longbow yeah, is kind of hit or miss for me. Uh, I've seen some people, and I know it, it doesn't seem this long, but it just seems like it in the heat of the moment. That third, you know in the heat of the moment or heat of the battle, you know, they're standing back, they use their longbow, and it just seems like they're standing there just for like 30 seconds. It's just like, that gives me enough time, you know, to engage on you to go ahead and at least get a free heavy off on you. Maybe even a second, if I'm quick enough, you know, and that might be enough to kill you. So, really for longbow, I don't see a point in it. One, because it just, it just seems like it takes too long to fire. Even though the damage is okay, um, but it's also easy easy to dodge if you know it's coming, yada, yada, yada. So I really don't like using a longbow for that reason. I like using Fury just because it's also raising my attack and my defense greatly, which is also making me more tanky, which is awesome. That is, I love being more tanky. So then finally, for his tier 4, this is really user's choice, uh, in my opinion. Now... For my attacking side of things, I like using Spear Storm um, because specifically, like if there's a if there's a whole four v four or four v three group group fight going on, and if they're if they're not paying attention, you can go ahead and cast out your Spear Storm. You know, it'll make a huge gong type of sound, and then you'll just wipe the whole team. You might want to be careful. He might kill your team as well. Uh, because the Spear Storm don't care. <laughs> and, uh, but that, that's something to, to use. And I like using Spear Storm because it also, specifically if they're fighting, you know, right next to the commander, the commander's always kind of like right there in the mix, usually. So you can do some damage to him as well, which is awesome. Uh, again, Fire Flask for Vikings is always good. Um, it's, it's always a good feat to have. But he also has a very unique one uh, with Spear Storm, which is called Champion's Aura. You know, you get an aura which heals you and nearby allies. I use that on my defending class uh, because that, the great thing about that is, is that that also heals uh, the, your commander. So think of it as the stalwart banner, but not as good. Um, you're more of a portable banner, if, if that makes sense. But... Um, of course you are healing you know you are healing yourself as well as allies so that does help quite a bit whenever you're in in a lot of a uh, in a lot of gang situations and stuff like that so for his perks I as always I like to use Bastion eventual Barry and last Dan. you know it makes me more tanky I'm able to do more damage in the long run yada 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 so uh, that's that's what I like to use in the Highlander so now at this particular moment uh, what you're going to be seeing up on the screen right now is where I went into the hero tactics to learn what the game wants to teach you about the Highlander and everything like that. So while that's up on the screen, I'm going to be talking about the hero specific moveset and what, uh, and what the game is trying to teach you more in a verbal sense. Uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy that. So while I go through that, as I said, you'll see the combos up on the screen. I necessarily won't go into detail about the combos as you're going to be seeing them. So, uh, do keep that in mind. 
So, of course, for Renown, you are a hybrid character. Renown is balanced across all activities. It does not matter what you do. Uh, you will you get the balanced Renown. Revenge mode, as we all know, boosts attacks and health. All attacks are uninterruptible. Parries and throws knock enemies down. Attacks are auto parried upon activation. Now, offensive form and defensive form. Highlander's guard mode has two forms. Defensive form has a has access to block, parry, and normal guard break. Offensive form has access to unblockable attacks. Defensive form. The, this uh, this form for the Highlander takes normally, focusing primarily on a stance for defending and trading. Defensive form super armor. So heavy chain attacks, Celtic's curse, and light non opener attacks have super armor or what I like to call it as hyper armor. Defensive form light openers. Light openers attacks have crushing counter strike properties, which is a superior block plus unblockable and enhanced damage upon countering. Time will to counter attack. If people if you don't understand that, think of the warden. The warden has one crushing counter strike ability which is on his the top guard. Now the Highlander has that as well, but he also has that on the right and left side as well. So entering offensive form, so you're gonna hold R2, which is your heavy attack button, since we're on PS4, to enter the offensive form. Continue to hold R2 to remain in offensive form. So you have fast flow. So hold R2 after a parry, guard break, throw or after any attack other than defensive forms chain finisher to immediately enter offensive form fast flow during guard break fast fast flowing while guard breaking a target will not cause the target to counter guard break offensive form while in offensive form you can launch a special attacks while maintaining the form by holding r2 on ps4 offensive form enhance the light attack offensive form Lights are, are not interrupted when blocked. Offensive form unblockable heavy. When in, in offensive form, release R2 for an unblockable heavy. After this attack, you will return to defensive form if R2 is not held. Offensive form cancels. Offensive form heavy attack can be canceled during the startup with offensive form light attacks, the Fomorian kick, or saber toss. Fomorian kick can be canceled during a startup with saber toss. Offensive form dodge dodges while in offensive form Highlander dodges are altered with uh, forward and side dodges becoming faster and back dodges becoming slightly slower. So the saber toss upon taking hold of an enemy pinning them Highlander will toss the toss opponent behind him he will either throw them slightly towards the right or the left of his guard stance or facing those directions while performing the saber toss. So exiting Offensive form, we press circle on the PS4 to return to defensive form. Suffering a hit will also cause you to return to defensive form. After an attack in offensive form, you will also return to defensive form if you are not holding R2 on the PS4. Zone attack, uh, cancel zone attack after the first or second attack with circle on the PS4. You cannot fast flow into offensive form. Your sprint attack. Cancel sprint attack after the first attack with circle on the PS4. You cannot fast flow that into offensive form. Celtic curse cancel. Uh, cancel from Celtic curse into the left or right heavy. Highlander will step, uh, sidestep to the opposite side of the attack. Celtic curse cancel chain starters. The Celtic curse and Celtic curse cancels can be initiated chains after, as a heavy attack starter. And then finally, Celtic Curse cancel into Fast Flow. So Celtic Curse can be canceled during a startup by fast flowing into offensive form. So now that's pretty much everything that the Highlander has to offer. Um, now one of the things that I do like to use as a Highlander is um, I'm a very uh, floater. I'm a floater type of character, if you will, as a hybrid. Um, I like to run around. I like to go down to the ram, kind of help out there, whoever's down there on the ram trying to push it. I might clear out some minions for them, let them go heal, let them come back, you know, then I'll go run off, go help somebody else, you know, that maybe is focusing on the ramparts or, or whatnot. Uh, but that's the way that I really like to use the Highlander. Now, one of the ways that, as of right now during Season 4, kind of the way to use the Highlander is 
pretty much right now is a hyper armor trade trade game that is pretty much the way it is now unless you get good at with during your superior blocks or your crushing crown of strikes or uh, while in offensive form you actually can use the Highlander to dodge now I've seen a Highlander stay in offensive form and dodge everything um, and go out with a, you know <laughs> just hit a heavy dodge 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 heavy you know you know it's kind of one of those type of things there also something to keep in mind for the people that don't know if you get a heavy or if you get a kick while in offensive form or the four, the four Morian kick, um, you also get a uh, get a guaranteed heavy. Also, if you grab them with the saber toss, you get a guaranteed heavy as well. Also, if you do toss them down while there's a Centurion or a Yorman Gunner next to you, they can also uh, help help you take them out by the Centurion d during his jump, and also during the Yorman Gunner's uh, hammer hammer toss or whatever it's called. So. Just some things to keep in mind while using the uh, the highlighter. So hopefully I answered a lot of questions, comments, concerns. If I did, definitely drop a like. Also, if I missed something, definitely leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys. So, anyways, hopefully I answered a lot of questions, comments, concerns, as I said. And I will see you in the next video.